Hello ladies, this is Brianna from MissRedders.com and for this look, I want to show you how to achieve the side part sewing and as a plus, I'm going to also teach you how to achieve this girl next door beautiful curly look. Make sure you braid your braids down for your braid pattern base and for my braids, I have all of them going away from my part. Every two braids join to form one. And I only have leave out at the front sides of my hairline and at my part. This braid you see here is where the leave out will be on this side of my head. And on the other side, I'm pointing to show you where the rest of the hair is left out. I only have hair left out at the front and at my part. And as you can see, this is how your braid should look. Now, this is how my braid looks at the very back because this is going to help you effectively sew down your hair extensions at the nape of your neck. As you can see, all of my braids have been stitched down and I will demonstrate on the last braid how to do so. So you want to fold it up in between the two braids and then you want to put the needle through both cornrow braids and around your folded braid. Wrap the thread around the needle twice and pull it through to create a knot. This is the stitching technique you will be using throughout the entire process. Now as a plus, I want you to make sure that you thread a bunch of needles and threads and that's because you're going to continue to use it throughout the process. I don't want you to have to stop and reload one needle at a time, that's going to slow you down. So prepare anywhere from about 10 to 15 needles while you're doing this entire installation process. gonna cut off the needle and we finished stitching down our braid pattern base. Now it's time to sew down the weaving net. Your weaving net is crucial in giving you added strength to your hair. This is going to prevent you from having weak spots in your hair when you're stitching down your hair extensions. And this is also great for those who have very fragile or thin hair to begin with. So what we're going to do is we're going to stitch it going around in this section as you can see here. You first want to stitch around where your leave out will be. So first we're going to insert the needle at the very beginning of that braid and you're going to do the same looping and stitching technique when you're stitching down the weaving net to your braids. And you guessed it, you're also going to use the same technique when you're stitching down your extensions. Now when you're stitching through your braid, you only want to stitch at the very top of your cornrow braid. Don't stitch too far down because you want to stitch as close to that braid as possible so that when you're sewing your last extension, it's as close to your leave out as you possibly can get it. This is how it should look until you finish stitching all the way around. And as you can see here, this is how it should look. Now it's time to stitch along the sides. That's why you have to make sure that in order to make your extensions lay very flat, you have a braid that's going around the sides of your head as well as all the way around the nape. So that way you don't have much lift near the sides or the back of your head. So when you're stitching, make sure that you're not stitching too close but not too far apart. And also you want to stretch the net as you put your needle through the net and under your braid when stitching. Now this is how one side looks after I stitched it down and this is how this side looks that you just saw. Now it's time to stitch the very back and I wanted to make sure to show you how to do this part because even though it seems like you're doing the exact same thing in the front, it's actually a little bit different. 
Every time you're getting ready to make a stitch, you always want to stretch your weaving net first and then you want to put the needle through the net and around the braid. So you're still doing the same stitching technique, but you're making sure that you're gathering the net and stretching it and pulling it together. So that way it contours at the back of your head. If you don't do this stretching technique, before you begin stitching, it's gonna make it look like your net is lifted in the back and you don't want that. So continue to pull, stretch, and then stitch to finish sewing down your weaving net. Now that we've finished sewing the weaving net and we've trimmed off the rest, this is how beautiful the foundation looks. It is very neat and tidy so that our extensions will be stitched down flawlessly. And after stitching down one bundle, this is how it looks. So because we have a side part, you want your bundles to start to slant in that direction so that there's even distribution. Now, this is how flat it looks because we have that braid going around the back of our head. And I'm just gonna show you how far apart your weft should be sewn. And now this is the second bundle that I have stitched down. And I'm gonna spin around just to show you how full it looks. But we're gonna add another bundle on top of this. So as you can see here, I stopped for a moment because I'm gonna show you how to do the fold over method. This method is extremely useful in giving you so much life out of your hair extensions. The reason why I say that is because this is going to allow you to continue to reuse your hair for as much as you can. The Miss Rider's hair extensions typically last at least two years. So with great care, it's gonna last a lot longer, of course. And if you don't cut through your hair extensions, it's gonna give you longevity when you wanna reuse them again. So when Doing the fold over method, you just fold it into the opposite direction, just as you see here. And you continue stitching with the same stitching technique that you've learned throughout the entire process. We are all sewn down, ladies, and in my head, I have installed three bundles and one quarter bundle of 22 inches of the Miss Brothers Luxury Virgin Hair Extensions. If your hair is darker than mine, then feel free to color your bundles. Now we're gonna go ahead and straighten out our hair so that we can have that seamless blend. And always use a heat protectant to protect the health of your hair, to prevent thinning, and also to prevent heat damage. So with just a little bit, you're gonna put it on your hair and you're also going to comb through your section of hair so that it's fully detangled. I like to then go ahead behind that wide tooth comb with a small tooth comb so I can further detangle my hair. Because I have thick but fine hair, what works best for me is pulling on my ends as I straighten it, instead of doing the comb chase method. Now check this out with just one pass of the flat iron. You can see how seamlessly my hair blends with the Mrs. Brothers hair extensions. Now that we're done straightening out our leave out, it's time to further define the side part right before we begin adding styling products. Also, I suggest that you use a smaller tooth comb to further comb out your hair so that it's very flat and smooth before you add any products to your hair. Now ladies, look at how seamless this blend looks. Your eyes are not deceiving you, trust me. This hair blends so well with African American hair. Now it's time for some edge control because it's time to really make the side part come to life. So what you wanna do is grab a little bit of your edge control and I like to put it on the back of my finger so I can direct it exactly where I want it to be. And what I want you to do is lightly apply it to the edges of your hairline first. 
Now you're gonna use your comb to further blend and smooth the product into your hair. You can get as creative as you want to do at this part. You can add some swirls or some swoops, you know, something like some ocean waves that I got going on here. You can do whatever you want to bring such a creative look to your hair when wearing your side part sewing. start doing the other side and one thing that I want to mention is that using a small tooth comb is completely optional. A lot of you ladies like to use a toothbrush and I occasionally like to use a toothbrush as well just for doing my edges not for my teeth but you can use a brush a actual board bristle brush or a toothbrush if you prefer and sometimes I like to use a comb or a brush it just depends but for this look I really like the way the comb is making my edges look. Now, one extra tip that really ties in the look and makes it look very, very sleek is actually putting edge control on your part. This is going to make the front of your hairline match the way that your part actually looks and you want to make sure that you fully smooth this product into your hair. So use the back of the comb, your hands, and the teeth of the comb to smooth it in. Ladies, as you can see, the hair is so gorgeous and the edge control really tied in the look. So now really quickly, I'm just going to show you how to put some curls in your hair. And you can use any styling tool you like. I happen to be using a tapered curling wand. Now when wrapping your hair around the wand, make sure you do it very flatly for these curls. Now hold it with a duck bill clip just so it cools. And then when you're done, you remove all your clips and you're going to gently finger detangle your curls. Now you want to grab a large section of your curls and you're going to start kind of rubbing them together and smoothing them out so that it can form one big coil. And you're going to do this on multiple sections throughout your entire head and spray with hairspray. So as you can see ladies, it was so effortless achieving that girl next door curly, beautiful hairstyle. And voila ladies, our beautiful sew-in hairstyle is completely finished using Miss Writers Hair Extensions from MissWriters.com. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe for more. And until next time, see you in another video.